My friends, I've just finished a journey. After reviewing Yakuza Like a Dragon, I decided to go back and play all of the mainline Yakuza games and became absolutely hooked on the series. It's actually become one of my favorite franchises of all time, and I can't wait to see what Ryu Gagutaku Studio has in store for the future. With all of the mainline Yakuza games on Game Pass and Xbox, the series has exploded in popularity, and I'm quite sure a few people like myself have been playing through the series for the first time. Yakuza 6 was a swan song of original protagonist Kiru following him in his last adventure as he goes around punching people in the face and singing karaoke. This was actually the first game to be a PS4 exclusive instead of being a cross-gen release, and the first in the series to move to the incredible looking Dragon Engine, which ended up overhauling every aspect of the Yakuza games. Like many others before me, over the course of the previous six games, I had developed a strong bond to Kiru and his unique brand of honor and justice. While I was disappointed to see his journey come to a close, like the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. While we now know the series' torch was passed on to another amazing character in Ichiban, I can only imagine how longtime series fans felt to find out Yakuza 6 would be Kiru's final game as the lead. So without further introduction, join me as I go on my journey to the Platinum Trophy in Yakuza 6 The Song of Life. A quick aside before we start, I will not be going into heavy spoilers Yakuza 6 outside of setting up the main plot. If you have not played the Yakuza games, while there is an overarching plot, each game is typically its own self-contained plot and Yakuza 6 is no different. I am however planning on doing multiple Yakuza videos, including a series retrospective and series ranking that will go into spoilers, so be on the lookout for those if you're a fan of the series. We start off with Kira going to jail for three years to help save his family from the fallout of the ending of Yakuza 6. Of course, if he had just hired a good lawyer, it said that he would be able to get off without any jail time, but Kiro being Kiro, he decides it would be best for his family if he did go to jail. Haruka and the kids of the orphanage are obviously devastated by this, but they do their best to move forward. While Kiro is still in jail, Haruka is continually harassed by journalists, which she fears will have negative ramifications for the future of the kids of the orphanage. She sneaks off one night, saying that she wants to live closer to Kiru and that she will return once he's out of prison. Once Kiru is released from prison, he is happy to finally be with his family again, only to be shocked to find out that Haruka is not at the orphanage. The kids are also confused because they were under the impression that she had moved close to Kiro so she could visit him. Kiro, wanting his family to be whole, promises he will find Haruka, and he immediately leaves for Kamarucho to find clues to her whereabouts. While in Kamarocho, Kiro discovers that Haruka is also there, however she has been in a hit and run accident and is now in critical condition. When Kiro arrives at the hospital, he is shocked to find out that Haruka now has a son named Haruto. He is skeptical that the hit and run was an accident, and also wants to find the father of Haruto, so he can be there for Haruka, which sets up the main plot of the story. Since Haruka is now in a coma, the only clue Kiro has is that she was in Hiroshima, so he sets off with Haruto to find the child's father. Of course, this being a Yakuza game, Kiro stumbles into multiple plots involving rival mafias and gangs along the way. The Sayo Triad and the Yakuza Tojo Clan are currently at war in Kamurocho, and it is escalated to the point where Tojo Clan members are being murdered in the streets. Prior to Kiro being released from prison, Little Asia and Kamurocho had been burnt down, causing the police to arrest Majima, Diago, and Sajima in a desperate attempt to stop the war from happening. This causes a new power struggle in the Tojo clan, of course, along with other factions to move into Kamurocho like the Yingwan Mafia. Kiru finds himself in the middle of everything after befriending members of the Yangwei Alliance's Hiroshi family, as he has to fight his way to find out who Haruta's father is and why Haruka was hit by a car. Like I mentioned earlier, since Yakuza 6 was made in a new engine, everything from the worlds to the combat in minigames was remade from the ground up. Combat, while very similar to previous games, has a different feel to it. It's the same action brawler old school beat em up style that we've grown accustomed to, however there are some key changes. Combat will feel a bit sluggish at first, part of this is due to the game's performance, although I will go over that more in detail later on, and part of it is that combat speed upgrades feel more significant than in previous entries this time around. You still have your heat actions, which are as brutal as ever, but they are a bit sparse compared to other games in the series. This made combat feel a bit stale at times when no heat actions were available, but extreme heat mode feels better than ever. When you activate it, you gain speed, and if you hit the quick time event buttons, it can dish out incredible amounts of damage. My one issue with it is that the camera pulls way too far in, which made it difficult to see what was going on in some boss fights when I activated it. Leveling was completely revamped as well, now you earn experience points in five different categories, all of which can unlock different abilities and stat upgrades. In some ways it felt a little bare bones because I had already played Yakuza Kwame 2 which used the framework of Yakuza 6 and added in a ton of new features and abilities, but nonetheless, Yakuza 6 overall was a huge step in the right direction for the most part. Many games are back and in almost every case better than ever. 
Again, since this was the first game in the new engine, there are quite a few missing minigames that would be added back in Konami 2, however, there's still plenty to do. Of course, mainstays like Mahjong and Shogi are essentially the same. Hooray! But some minigames like Baseball and Karaoke have been completely changed, in my opinion, are significantly better than they were before. Baseball feels much more skill-based as you have to aim the cursor to meet the baseball instead of the game just automatically hitting it for you when you press the button. There's also a few new games like spear fishing, bar friend making, internet chatting, and hostess dating that add in variety. I actually love the spear fishing. It's basically an on-rail shooter that can be quite challenging and it even has its own quest line that you'll have to finish for certain trophies. The new baseball team manager minigame was my favorite though. It had its own quest line and has you manage and recruit a team of baseball players and ends up being a baseball RPG. You set your lineup, level up teammates, and can even substitute in pitchers and pinch hitters when you need to. I did miss bowling and pool and hope they do add them back in future games. Overall, it's a Yakuza game. While it's a little light on content compared to previous entries, everything that Yakuza fans know and love is here. I actually thought in a vacuum, the story was one of the better Yakuza stories, but outside of that vacuum, it didn't feel like a great send-off for Kiru. The vast majority of previous cast members that we've all grown to know and love were cast aside for a completely new set of characters. And while these new characters aren't the best we've seen from the series, they certainly aren't bad ones either. The problem is that this was Kiryu's final game. So much was left on the table for a bog-standard Yakuza game plot. Which again, is totally fine, but it just didn't feel right for the last game starring Kiru. While Haruka, Date, and Akiyama have very brief appearances, other characters like Majima, Diago, and Sajima are only in the game for a few seconds. I think the game was a bit rushed, and I assume Sega wanted to leave the plot open in case they wanted to bring back those characters for future games. Which is fine, but I would like to see, you know, a satisfying conclusion to the end of the stories of all these other characters. Which makes Yakuza 6 story feel a bit hollow in some ways, and not really a proper send-off for Kiru. I'll be doing a Yakuza game series retrospective in the near future, so I'll give my full thoughts in that video as I don't want to give away too many spoilers in this one, but again, while the story was enjoyable, it was more disappointing knowing that so many things would be left undone for Kiru's story. I did run into some performance issues on the PS5 as well, especially during cutscenes. Most of the other Yakuza games are 60 FPS, but unfortunately Yakuza 6 is stuck at an abysmal 30 FPS even on newer consoles. This won't be an issue for PC players, but sadly there has been no PS5 patch to improve performance, which made combat feel sluggish at times. I hope they will eventually improve the performance, however seeing how they handle judgment, I just unfortunately don't see that happening. Okay, so let's get into the Platinum requirements. If you've gone for a Yakuza Platinum, you already know they are legendarily grindy and ridiculous. However, Yakuza 6 is probably one of the quickest in this series by a long shot. Don't get me wrong, there's still some pretty significant grinds, but they are nothing compared to some of the other Platinums in the series. The one big significant difference is that this time around, you do not have to fully complete the insanely long completion list. For those unaware, the completion list is unfortunately a staple of the Yakuza series that documents every minuscule little thing that can possibly be done in the game and then some. While this is actually appreciated, what isn't is forcing players to 100% it for a Platinum as there are generally a significant amount of tasks that are very tedious or rely on RNG, which is never, ever a good thing. For the Yakuza 6, you only have to do 100 tasks on the list, which you'll easily finish just going through the game while finishing some of the other random trophies. Now don't get me wrong, you still have to do most of the list, you just don't have to do some of the worst parts of it, which made such a huge difference. You can still of course complete everything, but the amount of experience you gain is very little compared to the amount of time it takes to complete, as there's much better ways to gain experience outside of the completion list. So the main trophies are of course to beat the game, then to beat again on legendary difficulty, max out all stats, finish all sub-stories, and level a clan creator character to max level. There are some other significant grinds buried inside some of those trophies as well, for instance some sub-stories requiring grinding certain minigames to unlock them. This actually was generally a fun grind, as I enjoyed most of the main minigames like the baseball management sim and the spearfishing. The one that was rather tedious and expensive was the hostess minigame. At Club Shine, there's five hostesses who you gain affection with every time you go to the club. Once you max out their meter, you get a side quest for them, which ended up being a rather significant grind. This wasn't helped by how repetitive and ultimately uninteresting the minigame was, and it made me miss the cabaret minigame in Yakuza 0 and Kwame 2, which was significantly more fun and interesting. I wish the spear fishing had more levels, as I said earlier, I really enjoyed the on-rail shooter, and it left me wanting more after finishing its three levels. Basically, each level has a quest tied to it and ended up taking very little time to complete. The baseball sim took a lot longer. While leveling up your players does help, the game also relies heavily on RNG. 
which normally I wouldn't like, but I ended up enjoying the baseball sim so much, I didn't mind. It took me a bit longer than I thought it would. I had horrible luck with the third team, so I had to go back and grind a bit, but the fourth and final team I beat on my first try, so it does come down to luck for how long it takes to finish. The bar friend making minigame at Snack New Gaudi was also pretty quick. There's really not much to it. You visit the bar, and when you drink with a person, your friendship meter goes up, which is done with a click of a button. There's no gameplay to it. After you max out the meter, you get a substory for that person, which will consist of a very long dialogue tree where you have to pick all of the right answers for. While most of the answers are pretty straightforward, sometimes it's not, and all the chat options seem roughly the same. This wasn't a terrible minigame, but certainly not the best that we've seen from the Yakuza games. If you go for the Platinum, I'd recommend just using a guide for the right answers because there's not too much fun to be had with this minigame. The story, while quite lengthy, was made up almost entirely of cutscenes, which I personally don't mind, but I can see some other players being turned off by this. The actual gameplay of the story equates to roughly 3 hours, while the cutscenes total in at just over 13 hours, which is a pretty lopsided ratio. While I've thought some of the previous games gave too much of the story away in exposition, Yakuza 6 is the exact opposite as every single little minute detail is giving a cutscene, and they should have cut <laughs> them down a bit. I'm not a fan of exposition in general, but there are effective ways to use it as a storytelling tool, and for some parts of the story, I really wish they had done this. Especially with no English voice acting, some of the scenes really dragged on too long. I still found it enjoyable, however, I can totally see a lot of other people not enjoying this aspect of the game. For the legendary difficulty trophy, you only need to do the final fight to make it pop, so if you make a save right before the final fight, you can just reload your save, switch the difficulty, and then go for the trophy. You do have to beat the game once on easy, normal, or hard difficulty to unlock legendary difficulty, so you cannot just do it in one playthrough. There's a bunch of other random trophies which are all very quick to get, but the three that took by far far the most amount of time was maxing out all skills, going for 100 clan creator wins, and maxing out a clan creator character level. Now if you're worried about going for the 100 wins, don't be. It'll take a ton more wins than that to max out a character's level, so you'll get that trophy along the way. You can spend your own experience points to level characters, but you will also need those experience points to max out your own stats, which is also a significant grind. The best strategy I found was to farm the last level of the clan creator in Kamurocho, which was extremely time consuming, repetitive, and boring, but it did give 200,000 yen per win. You can then use this money to buy supplements from the gym, which give a ton of experience points, so once you max out your own stats, you can then spend the experience points to max out a clan creator character. This will still take a significant amount of time, I wasn't keeping track, but it probably took over 10 hours at the very least. While they significantly improved the clan creator in Yakuza Kwame 2, Unfortunately, the Yakuza 6 version wasn't nearly as fun. It again was by no means bad, but far from the best minigame in the series. All in all, it wasn't an overly difficult platinum trophy, just very grindy and repetitive. This is one of the shortest Yakuza games, and it's almost like they were struggling to come up with ideas for trophies, so they had to think up of grindy tasks to extend out the playtime. While I'm extremely glad I didn't have to 100% the completion list, I am still surprised they chose not to include that. I thought they had finally learned that people really don't enjoy finishing the list, however, I'm finding out now, while playing Judgment, they brought back the list with a burning vengeance. Overall, it's an enjoyable experience and a good game. It's just lacking in content in some areas. Of course, hindsight is 2020, as we now know they used the Yakuza 6 framework to make one of the best entries in the series, Yakuza Kiwami 2, which is bursting at the seams with content, so perhaps Yakuza 6 was a necessary growing pain the franchise had to go through. While the story was enjoyable, it felt like an empty send-off to such an incredible character like Kiru. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed we'll never get to see him mainline another game and see a proper end to his story. That being said, it's a Yakuza game through and through, so if you like the other games of the series, you're probably going to enjoy this one as well. As for the journey to the Platinum Trophy rating, I give Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, a silver trophy. While there's fun to be had, there's just too much of a repetitive grind, and I wish they expanded the baseball and spearfishing minigames instead of forcing you to grind out the same clan creator levels over and over again. But while this Platinum is by no means quick, it's still the shortest Yakuza Platinum, so if you're a fan of the series and want to Platinum one of the games, Yakuza 6 is definitely one of the better options. If you've never played a Yakuza game before, I will be doing a video on which game to start with, as it's somewhat of a complicated question as for which game you should play first. But while Yakuza 6 is worth playing, it's absolutely not the game you should play first in the series, so make sure you're subscribed to see that video which should be coming out soon. If you've gone for multiple Yakuza Platinums including 6, let me know down in the comments how you feel it compares to the other ones. 
If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button, and I'll see you all in the next one.